My name is Aaron Massey from MrFixItDIY.com and welcome back to another episode of Homeschool. For today's project, I'm going to show you how to install a basic sprinkler system for your yard. I'm currently tackling a backyard overhaul project and as part of it, I need to install a few new irrigation zones. I installed this small succulent garden a few years ago and while it doesn't require a ton of water, with the heat of the summer, I still have to water it occasionally and I'm sick of pulling out the hose every time. So today I'm gonna to show you how I plan to install a sprinkler system for it and some nearby plants. I rate these projects by how many F-bombs you're likely to drop while tackling the project. This one is not too f***ing difficult, but it can take a while depending on the size of the area that you're installing. Step one is to locate a nearby water supply and lay out the irrigation line. In this case, I have an unused spigot behind my old shed and I plan to tap into it to use it as the source for this line. To determine how many sprinklers I can have on this line, I have to do some basic calculations on flow rate and water pressure for the house. The easiest way to test the water pressure is to use a water pressure testing gauge like this one and attach it to a spigot. In this case, the water pressure is just shy of 60 PSI. Next, to determine the flow rate, I use a five gallon bucket and turn the water on fully to see how long it takes to fill the bucket. Multiply the size of the bucket in gallons, which is five times 60 seconds, then divide that number by the number of seconds it took to fill. In this case, it's around 20 seconds. So the flow rate is about 15 gallons per minute. Once you have that number, it can help you determine how many sprinkler heads you can have on a zone or how many zones that you need. In this case, I'll be installing these pop-up Rainbird 1800 series sprinklers and a couple dedicated drip lines. You can check the flow rate of your chosen sprinkler types and what their coverage is on the manufacturer's website. I only need about six sprinklers total for this zone and each head has a flow rate of less than one gallon per minute. So I have plenty of pressure and flow rate for the needed coverage. Depending on your layout, you'll likely need to buy a combination of different pieces, fittings, and unions. I recommend that you buy more than you need and return the unused stuff. Once all your stupid math is out of the way, it's time for some good old manual labor. You'll have to dig a trench to bury the sprinkler line. Depending on the size of the area that you're working in and the type of soil that you have, that can either be easy or a huge pain in the ass. In most cases for irrigation lines, anywhere from eight to 12 inches deep is sufficient to bury your pipes. However, if you live in an area that freezes, make sure you plan to drain your lines at the end of the season so they don't freeze and rupture during the winter. Once you have the digging out of the way, you can start laying out your piping and sprinkler heads. Now there are a lot of different products out there that you can use, but I typically just use Schedule 40 PVC pipe because I find it easy to work with. In this case, I'm using three quarter inch diameter Schedule 40. I just work my way around laying out the pipe. Whenever I reach an area where I want a sprinkler head, I use one of these three quarter inch T-joints with a half inch threaded outlet where I will screw in a threaded riser for the sprinkler head. At each joint, I use purple PVC primer and cement making sure to prime each piece and then apply plenty of cement to hold each joint together so they're watertight. Once I've laid out and installed all the sprinkler heads, it's time to connect the line to the water supply. You have a bunch of different options for different types of zone valves here, but they all basically do the same thing. They allow the water to kick on either manually when you activate the valve or on a timer if you have it connected to an irrigation system. Some like the one I installed here run off solar power and operate on their own. These are called anti-siphon zone valves and they allow the water to flow out to the sprinkler lines but not backflow and contaminate your drinking water. To install them, you install your sprinkler line to the outlet side of the valve and connect the inlet side to your water supply line. You can add as many zones as needed based on your flow rate and water pressure. You can even add an isolation valve like this one which allows you to shut off the water to the irrigation lines without shutting off the main water supply to the house. Once everything is connected and you've let the PVC cement cure for at least 30 minutes, you can turn on the water and check the pipes for leaks. Once you've made sure the pipes don't leak, turn on your zone valve and sit back and watch your plants get watered. Then you can just backfill in your trench and that is it, you are done with this project. Well, that's it for this episode of Homeschooled. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Installing an irrigation line is a project that can take a little bit of time but once you get the hang of it, it's a relatively simple project that you can knock out by yourself and hopefully save yourself some money. If you did like this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already. And if you'd like to check out more of my DIY home improvement related content, you can always visit my website at mrfixitdiy.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.